The Spacecraft's Comparison U.S., Russia, and China Part 1 In the last episode, when comparing the International Space Station with China's Tiangong, it was mentioned that in June China will transport three astronauts to their space station through Shenzhou-12. On Thursday, June 17th, they managed to successfully launch the spacecraft and send three men into orbit in its first crewed mission in nearly five years. Part of an ambitious plan to complete a space station by the end of next year, just about two months earlier. April 29th, as it has always done, the Russian spacecraft Soyuz Ms. 18 took three astronauts to the International Space Station for the Mission Expedition 65. On the other side of the world, with three successful launches since May 2020 and further contracts from NASA and Axiom Space, Crew Dragon from SpaceX has made history and impressed the whole world with their performance. Give the rest of the world a lot of expectations for the future. Today with two episodes, we will compare the US Dragon spacecraft, Russian Soyuz, and China's Shenzhou to see what is the major differences between the two generations of space vehicles. The Shenzhou is closely related to Russia's Soyuz. The Chinese crewed spacecraft program was relaunched in 1992 with Project 921. The Phase 1 spacecraft followed the general layout of the Russian Soyuz spacecraft, with three modules that could separate for re-entry. China signed a deal with Russia in 1995 for the transfer of Soyuz technology, including life support and docking systems. It is not a secret that the Chinese human-rated space hardware, which capitalizes over 40 years of pre-existing accomplishments of the US and Russia. However, the Shenzhou spacecraft presents major differences from the Soyuz. Its service module, for example, has four main engines, whereas Soyuz has only one main and one backup engine. Also, Shenzhou's large solar arrays generate several times more electrical power than the Russian system. And unlike Soyuz, the Chinese orbital module carries its own solar panels and independent flight control system, allowing it to continue as a free-flying unmanned mini-laboratory long after the re-entry module has brought the crew back to Earth. The Chinese cargo spacecraft Tianzhou is released in 2017, the structure and capacity already very different from Russian cargo progress. Instead of the three modules, what Cargo Tianzhou implemented is two modules structure, and the payload is to point six times that of cargo progress, even larger than the payload of Cargo Dragons. So despite superficial resemblances and widespread news media allegations, the Shenzhou is in no way merely a copy of the Russian Soyuz. Nor is it entirely independent of Russia's experience or American experience. Both Russia and China are developing a new generation of reusable spacecraft and plan to put it into use in the next few years. In other words, in the next two or three years, the three modules spacecraft, which has served the space half a century, is about to retire. The interior design, Russia's Soyuz and China's Shenzhou spacecraft are very similar in the interior. The Chinese panels looks a little more modern. Shenzhou is substantially larger than Soyuz. The astronauts of Soyuz and Shenzhou both need to operate the panels with a stick. For the size of the craft, it's pretty much necessary to have the instrument panel that far away. Otherwise, there's no way to get in and out of the capsule. The distance does feel pretty awkward though. As a commercial company, SpaceX has put a lot of effort into the user experience. Compared with Soyuz, Shenzhou or the American Space Shuttle which retired in 2011. The first impression of Crew Dragon will definitely lead to the interior design. Doug Hurley and Bob Binken are the two astronauts of the first Crew Dragon mission. Before this mission, they have each flown to space twice on the space shuttle. Neither of them used to go to space with Soyuz, however. They definitely used to receive the training of Soyuz operation. After they returned to Earth, Doug Hurley said, you gave very used to the shuttle with 2000 switches circuit breakers. The seats are not the most comfortable vehicles to fly in. For those of us who were living with switches from the 1960s, all these years to see a modern interface is something pretty exciting. Touchscreen, racing car seats, space suits from Hollywood science fiction movies, bigger habitable space. For the interior design, Crew Dragon can be described as a modern or even future vehicle. Parameter comparison. All of the three spacecrafts have to variants. One for a manned mission, the other one is for cargo. For SpaceX, they are Crew Dragon and Cargo Dragon. For Soyuz, they are Soyuz and Cargo Progress. For Chinese spacecrafts, 
They are Shenchu and Cargo Qianzu. Let's compare the crew ones and cargo ones separately. For the manned spacecrafts, the original design for SpaceX Crew Dragon can carry seven astronauts to low Earth orbit, but due to the propulsive landing was cancelled. And the final option is the ocean splashdown under parachutes. NASA decided to change the specification for the angle of the ship's seats due to concerns about the G-Force's crew members might experience during splashdown. With the change of the seat angle, SpaceX had to do away with the company's original seven-seat design and modified it to four seats. Crew Dragon can survive on its own in low Earth orbit for one week. It is designed to remain on the station for up to 210 days. The pressurized space for the crews is 9.3 cubic meters. The Crew Dragon also has unpressurized 12.1 cubic meters for cargo and 36.8 cubic meters of unpressurized space for cargo with the extended trunk. Although with much bigger space, for operational missions, Crew Dragon only carry around 113 kilograms of cargo to the ISS together with the crews. And it looks like they did not take any cargo back with the return capsule. Soyuz can carry up to three crew members. It is designed to stay 180 days docked to a space station. But the cargo progress MIS-14 keeps a record of remaining docked with ISS for more than one year. The habitable space in the descent module is just for cubic meters. Imagine that the similar size to an elevator. This also means that the Crew Dragon has doubled the space for the astronauts during the launch and re-entry. It also holds another 5 cubic meters of pressurized living space in the orbital module where houses all the equipment that will not be needed for re-entry, such as experiments, cameras, or cargo. The module also contains a toilet. The Soyuz can deliver 350 kilograms of payload together with the crews to the ISS. And approximately 50 kilograms of payload can be returned to Earth with the descent module. The Chinese Shenzhou can carry up to three crew members. It can survive on its own in low Earth orbit for five days. The latest Shenzhou 12 will dock with its own Chinese space station for three months. Shenzhou has six cubic meters of habitable volume in the descent module. It is something between the Soyuz and Crew Dragon. Similar to Soyuz, it also holds another habitable space in the orbital module, which is 8 cubic meters. The interesting design is the orbital module was equipped with a solar panel and flight control system. After separating with the descent module it still can serve as a satellite. The crewed spacecraft Shenchu can deliver 300 kilograms of payload together with the crews to the Chinese space station. And the descent module can take 50 kilograms cargo back to the Earth. As you may have noticed, although the space of Russian and Chinese re-entry module is very limited, they still keep the capacity for about 50 kilograms cargo back. This 50 kilograms is very precious to them. Currently it is the, the only chance they can bring something back from the space. Then let's see how about the cargo ones. The cargo dragon can carry 6 tons to the orbit, as well as bring 3 tons back. The Russian progress can carry to point for tons to orbit. But, unlike Dragon, it cannot return. The China Qianzu can carry 6.9 tons to orbit, which is a little more than the Dragon, and to point 0.6 times of the progress, which makes Tianzu the largest cargo spacecraft currently flying. But just like the progress, Tianzu cannot return. The unique feature of cargo dragons is the return and reusability. Before the next generations of Russian and Chinese spacecraft are put into use, the Cargo Dragon will be the only reusable cargo spacecraft in service. SpaceX plans to reuse each Cargo Dragon capsule up to five times. Cost and price comparison. As well as removing America's dependence on Russia to send its astronauts into space. The SpaceX launch was significant for another key reason. The cost. The total NASA has awarded SpaceX since 2014 is to $0.5 billion. From this one point to billion dollars is the development costs. $49 million is the Special Studies Awards. This means the total cost of the six missions that NASA ordered from SpaceX is $209 million each. Then the seat price per astronaut will depend on how many astronauts per mission. NASA's option for four or three seats, which makes the seat price estimated to be around $55 million. SpaceX is also considerably cheaper. Than the 12 trips NASA paid Russia for since 2017 that worked out at approximately $80 million per seat. The low cost and even commercialization of manned spacecraft 
is a trend. The Apollo program had a cost per seat of $390 million when adjusted for inflation, while the figure for the space shuttle comes in at $170 million. The NASA audit estimated that the per seat cost of the SpaceX Crew Dragon comes to $55 million while Boeing Starliner adds up to $90 million. Not a bad deal for American taxpayers, by any stretch. So far, China's manned spacecraft, only carrying Chinese astronauts, has not carried out any real commercial manned project, and there is no contract from NASA as a reference. On the 17th of October, 2005, following the success of Shenzhou 6, Chinese media officially stated that the cost of this flight was around $110 million. For the capacity of three seats, the cost is around $37 million per seat and means about $48 million in 2020. However, this is the cost, but not the price. We can deduce that, with the current cost, if China now offered the seat to the market, the price probably won't be cheaper than SpaceX. This is the first part of our comparison. Till now the Crew Dragon seems to be big winner in every aspect. In the next episode, we will continue with further detail about these three spacecrafts currently flying including the comparison of landing, docking, and launch escape system. You may find out why we should say, the old is respected and reliable. The new one has to show it, and gain respect by time. If you are interested, keep in touch and we will see you next time.